Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel and my very first video of 2020. <laughs> How exciting. In today's video, I am going to be creating this makeup look here using my favorite products from 2019. Now, a lot of these products were new releases in 2019, but some of them are just old favorites that I have not been able to put down. Most of these products I do have individual reviews on as well, so I will have them all listed in the description box. If there's a product you want to hear more about, check below because there's a high chance there'll be a review on it. All right, well, if you are excited for this video and to hear what my favorite makeup of the year has been, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. All right, can you all guess what primer I'm going to start with? I'll give you a sec. I know what you're gonna say. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness. This has just been such a favorite of mine for so long. I just, I freaking love it. So obviously the first thing I love the most about this primer is that it actually neutralizes the redness. That's what all green primers are supposed to do, but I feel like they don't. My skin is just red from breakouts. I've got pigmentation. It's very sensitive, so if I touch it or like blow my nose, that area is going to be red for a while. So having a green primer really, really helps, especially being so fair. The foundation I'm using doesn't have a lot of pigment to it, so it's not going to be covering the redness as much as a deeper foundation. So using a green primer to neutralize the redness really, really helps. This one is a very liquidy and runny formula. It blends really easily into the skin and it doesn't leave any residue. It just kind of seeps right in. The formula does have a very tiny sheen to it. When you look at it, you can kind of see a little bit of a shimmer, but on the skin, it just gives you that nice healthy glow. It's nothing too like in your face and offensive. Let's do a little before and after using the primer. Another primer I have absolutely been loving is the L'Oreal Glow Cherie Natural Glow Enhancer. And this is in the shade Porcelain Glow. I have just been really obsessed with a hydrated and glowy base this year. And this primer really does the job. I just put this primer all over my face. You can only put it on the high points if you want, but I do like to get that glow everywhere. Again, this formula is really nice. It's a little bit thicker than the anti-redness one, but it leaves a really nice sheen to the skin. And it also has a bit of a blurring effect. So I find my pores around here do look blurred out when I use it. The amount of glow it gives can still be very natural. So if you're doing a no makeup makeup look, you can still use this primer without looking like the Tin Man. If I were to be doing a no makeup makeup look, I wouldn't use as much. As you can see, I have gone in heavy handed today because I am going to be putting foundation over the top. This one does have a slight watermelon scent to it. It's not too strong, but if you are really sensitive, then that's something to think of. Next for color correcting, I have still been loving my Astralis Color Click Concealer. This one is a very light pastel color. So it works really well on my fair skin tone because it kind of blends into it better than a really bright, vibrant green. The formula of this one is great. It blends really easily into the skin. It's really lightweight. It's not thick and heavy that it's going to feel uncomfortable on the skin. And it does its job of neutralizing the redness. For foundation, I have three here I wanna talk about. And these are the ones I have dipped into the most over the year. First up is the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop foundation. This does come in a variety of really fair shades. I found the best match for me was light porcelain. It's still a little bit light, but I like to mix it in with other foundations anyway, because this foundation is a very matte formula. And sometimes it does show dry patches on my skin, but what I freaking love about it is its coverage and its longevity. If you put this on your skin, it is not coming off for at least 10, 11 hours. As I mentioned, I also love to mix this foundation in with others if I want them to be a bit more long lasting. It's one of my go-to foundations for the hotter months and I couldn't recommend it enough. The next foundation is only quite new to my collection, but I was obsessed with it 
from the very first time and it is the Astralis Fresh and Flawless Full Coverage Foundation. And again, the thing I love the most about this is its coverage and its longevity. This foundation is a lot more liquidy and it's a lot more lightweight than the NYX. It does have a matte finish and I find once it's on the skin, it's not going anywhere. Even when it comes to applying it, I like to do sections because once I've blended out that area, there's no going back and trying to touch it up or re-blend it because it is in place. The shade I have is Fairest. It is a bit too warm for me. It is described to be neutral, but it definitely leans more on the warm side. So again, I do like to mix this with another foundation just to get the right shade, but that really doesn't bother me when I'm getting such good coverage and longevity out of it. And then the last foundation is the L'Oreal True Match. And this one has more of a medium buildable full coverage. It's definitely not as full as the other two foundations I've mentioned. But what I love about this is it looks a bit more skin-like. So I have the shade 0.5N Porcelain and I do really like this shade. It has a nice neutral undertone and it's definitely fair enough for me. So even though I am obsessed with full coverage foundations, I really love that this one is more of that medium buildable because it does give me more options. It has enough coverage to cover up my big blemishes and if I need a little bit extra, it is buildable. It's a very lightweight formula, so it feels very comfortable and breathable on the skin. And I love that it gives a kind of a glowy finish. It also has good longevity, but the thing I love about it the most is that finish on the skin. I always get really washed out once I put my foundation on, so let me zoom you in and give you a close up. So you can see here my cheeks look nice and glowy and the coverage is amazing. It's covered up these blemishes here pretty well. My nose is actually a bit dry, but look how the foundation is sitting on top of it. It still looks really good to me. And then this part of my cheek here is where I have quite a bit of pigmentation, but I still think it has covered it up so well. And it just always sits really nicely on top of any breakouts. It doesn't cling to them and make them look dry at all. For concealer, I have two absolute winners here. They are both really full coverage and come in super fair shades. The first one is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. And the second one is the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. I just love a full coverage under eye concealer. It's just my thing. I try and do medium coverage and I just feel like my makeup never looks the same. Having that nice full coverage flawless under eye I think just really pulls the whole face together. For me anyway. Both these formulas are on the thicker side but they're actually quite hydrating. You really don't need to use a lot. You get so much coverage and they're both really good for under the eye or covering blemishes. If you were wanting to try one of these concealers, I really do love them both equally, but I would say go pick up the e.l.f. one because it's only $10 from Kmart, whereas the L'Oreal one is $30. I've been using the L'Oreal concealer a lot lately, so I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. today. This is the shade Fair Beige. Like, look how fair that is. Unbelievable. If you've been a Shape Tape lover, I would definitely recommend trying either of these concealers. I have always been a bit of a snob when it comes to Shape Tape dupes. None of them ever stand up to Shape Tape. But these two, mm, they give Shape Tape a run for its money. I personally won't purchase Shape Tape again once I run out because I do have these more affordable options. For setting powder, nothing has changed. I am still obsessed with the Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil. It's just perfect. It is the most perfect loose powder. I have kind of switched it up though, and I now only use this to set under my eyes and a little bit on my nose and my chin. If I'm going out or I'm doing a super glam look, I will use it over my entire face, but I was just flying through this way too quickly. It is affordable, it's only $17, but still, I was using way too much. <sighs> this powder just sets everything in place beautifully, it leaves the skin looking flawless, and it also has a bit of a sheen to it, so it doesn't make your skin look really dry and cakey. Like, look how flawless my under eye and my nose looks. Just, 
And then what I've been doing for the rest of my face is just going in with any old powder. It's usually the Rimmel Stay Matte, but I have been dipping into the Astralis Fresh and Flawless this year. This powder has been raved about for years in the beauty community, especially here in Australia, but I never tried it because I didn't think it come light enough for me. But I found the shade Light Beige, which I don't know, I still think maybe a smidge too dark. But when I'm using it along with my model's prefer powder, it works because I've got that really light powder and I'm just using this one for my cheeks where I'm going to be adding more color anyway. I find the Estrella's powder to feel really lightweight on the skin. It sets the makeup in place really well and it doesn't feel overly drying. I think that's what gets me about trying new powders. A lot of, especially the more affordable ones, can sometimes feel really chalky and dry on the skin and I just, ooh, I don't like that. So that's why when I find a powder I like, I really just stick to it. For bronzer, there are two that I have been dipping into the most. First up is the Fenty Beauty Sunstalker Bronzer in the shade Inda Sun. And the second one is the designer brand's Get Glowing Bronzer in the shade Barcelona Bronze. Both of these bronzers are a matte formula. What I love about the Fenty one is that it has that perfect undertone for fair skin. It's neutral in tone and it's also on the more cool side, which just works perfect. You're not going to be looking like no orange Oompa Loompa when you're using this. And then the designer brand's bronzer, the shade is also fantastic for fair skin. You really don't see a lot of more affordable drugstore bronzers with this kind of undertone. So as soon as I saw this on Instagram, I was like, I need to try that because that looks like it's going to be perfect for fair skin. And I tell you now, it is. It's a smidge warmer than the Fenty, but not too crazy. So if you're after a new bronzer, but don't want to spend the money on something like the Fenty, I would definitely recommend this. I am going to go in with the Fenty today because I feel like being a little bit bougie amongst all my drugstore. Both of these bronzers blend really beautifully on the skin as well. They build up nicely and it really doesn't take a lot of work to get that flawless blended look. The next product is probably one of my most favorite finds this year, and it is the Savvy Cheek and Lip Color in the shade Sleek Rose. So this is a cream product that can be used for the cheeks or the lips. I use it on the lips. No, I don't. I use it on the cheeks. Oh my God. As I'm holding these products up to you, I'm realizing how friggin' manky they look, but I guess that just proves that I use them. I was really on the hunt for a nice cream blush that I could use for no makeup makeup looks. And this one was really cheap. I thought, mm, I may as well give it a go. I just fell in love. First of all, the shade is stunning and it works really nicely on my fair skin. The formula of this cream is absolutely perfect. It's not too oily where it leaves a residue on your skin and you look greasy and it also doesn't pick up makeup underneath. So this is a cream product and I'm using it on top of powders and it just applies flawlessly. It blends really easily. I just use a more dense brush and the longevity of this is fantastic for such a cheap product. And if you do want it to last a little bit longer, I just go in with a powder blush and set that on top. Because it's a cream, it does leave that nice, healthy sheen as well, which I have just been all about this year. I love full coverage foundation, but I still want my skin to look, not natural, but I want it to look fresh and glowy. For highlighter, I have been dipping into the cream products a bit more. I know, like, who am I this year? So the one I have been loving the most is the Flower Beauty Glisten Up Highlighter Chubby, and this is in the shade Pearl Shimmer. For application, I usually just go in with the bum of my beauty blender and dip it on top and then apply. But I got this brush recently. It's by Focalure. Focalure? Uh -huh. And I've just been tapping that on top and applying to my cheekbones. And it works really, really well. 
What I love about this is it's not too crazy of a highlighter. It does look nice and subtle on the cheekbones and again gives me that natural looking healthy skin glow. The color of it is perfect for my fair skin as well. It doesn't have too much of a pink tone to it which I've learnt over the last year I really do not like in a highlighter. I prefer more of that pearl or like light gold champagne colour. This one applies beautifully over the top of powder, it doesn't lift up any of my makeup and it also works really well for those no makeup makeup looks which I have been dipping into a little bit more this year. I love that you really don't need a lot of product as well, I only dipped into that a few times and look at the glow it has left. It is lasting me so long. For my brows, I absolutely fell in love with the Urban Decay Brow Blade. So one side of this has a micro tip brow pencil and the other side has a felt tip. And what you use this for is to draw on little hair like strokes. And for someone like me who has quite sparse brows, they actually don't look too bad now because I recently got them tinted. But when they're not tinted, it's hard to see much. So having a felt tip really does a good job at filling in those areas and it makes the brows look more natural so they don't look like they're overly done with a pencil or a pomade. If you're after a more affordable brow pencil, I've really been loving the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim. This one doesn't come with a felt tip, it is just a micro brow pencil, but it's a really nice formula, that perfect amount of creaminess mixed with staying power. It's not too creamy, it's not too dry, it sits perfectly in the middle, it has great longevity, and the color I use, Blonde, works really well for me. So in with the brow blade, I'm going in with the pencil side first. Now I have the shade Brown Sugar. So I'm going to fill in the front here, or just underline the front, sorry. I'm then going to draw an arch on top. I fill in that arch slightly, and then I go in with the felt tip side. Let me just zoom in a bit. And I just start from the bottom and flick up. I really love it for filling in the tail as well because this area of my brow is where I have the least amount of hair. So you can definitely tell when I filled it in with a pencil. So when I go in with the felt tip, it just makes it look like they're natural hairs and it hasn't been overly filled in. For eyeshadow palettes, there has been a few I've been loving this year. First up are the designer brand's ICU palettes. So these palettes all come with six shades each, four mattes and two shimmers, and they come in a variety of color stories. Now these palettes really, really shocked me. The formula of the matte shades is absolutely amazing. They are pigmented, they blend well, they build well. I can't fault them. The shimmers, they could be a little bit more, you know, they could have a little bit more oomph, but for the price, they do a really good job, and I definitely recommend these, especially if you only dip into the same shades. You're not really big on experimenting in eyeshadows. These are really good to have in your collection because you know that you're just going to have shades that you're going to use all the time. The next palette I really enjoyed this year was the Astralis Mesmerize. Now, this is a perfect addition to go with the Neutralize palette, which was one of my favorites from last year. As you can see, we've got a lot of pink and purple tones, all quite warm. It is a really beautiful palette. This formula is my absolute favorite formula from the drugstore. They have this really beautiful creaminess to them, which just allows them to blend so beautifully and so easily. This palette does come with glitters. You've got three here and I really wasn't a fan of those, but there are only three in the palette, so I can let it slide and I still think it's worth the money because the rest of the shades are absolutely stunning. And then this is probably really boring, but my absolute favorite shadows of this year have been my Makeup Geek shadows. These are just 
my ride or die shadows. They never fail me. And if I don't know what to do, I straight away reach for this palette. So these two top rows here are my absolute most reached for. I know they're just all like boring neutral shades, but they're the best. What can I say? Makeup Geek shadows do come individually. You buy them and pop them into a metal palette. They are definitely not new. I don't think they get as much hype anymore as they used to. When I first got into makeup, Makeup Geek was all the bloody rage and I really saved up to be able to build this palette. As I said, it's just my ride or die. I reach for it all the time when I don't know what to do and the shadows are just amazing. For today's video though, I think I'm going to dip into the designer brand's I See You palette and this is in the shade Coco Loco. I'm just going to quickly fast forward through this eyeshadow application and you can just see how they apply. Okay, so these are the eyes done. I just went in with any mascara and eyeliner. I really didn't have a favorite mascara this year. I was just kind of dipping into whatever's in my drawer. There was no real standout for me, unfortunately. Onto the lips. You know it's gonna be a nude lipstick. I still really loved my Astralis Girl Boss Demi Matte Liquid Lipstick, of course. I could never let this one go. But two other lipsticks from Astralis that really impressed me this year are the Girl Boss Lipstick Bullets. I have two shades here. The first one is Couture, and this is a really nice nude. It did break on me though, which is a bummer, but I can still use it. And then this shade is Black Tie. And this is more of a brown, kind of deeper nude. So these are both matte formulas. This lipstick does come in a variety of formulas and heaps and heaps of shades. I'm going to go in with both of them today and just mix it up. Why not? Why not? So this is the shade Black Tie on its own. I just love it. And even though these are matte formulas, they are really, really comfortable on the lips, not drying at all. And they apply beautifully. They're nice and opaque. Could not recommend enough. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the lighter shade just on a lip brush and tap that in the middle. And then lastly for setting spray, my absolute favorite of the year has been the L'Oreal Shake and Glow Luminous Setting Spray. I'm pretty sure I saw Jessica Braun on YouTube use this in one of her videos and I was like, I gotta get my hands on it. And surprisingly, it come to Australia quite quickly. So this is more of a luminous, dewy looking setting spray. It's not going to keep your makeup in place for a really long time, but the beautiful sheen it gives to the skin, it's stunning. Oh, I just love that extra glow it gives. Mm. I actually have one last thing I want to mention, and it is the Bisu Makeup Removing Cloth. So I have really been trying to cut down my use on makeup wipes. I feel like if everyone can choose one thing to make a small difference, in the bigger picture, it's going to help. So mine is cutting down on makeup wipes. So they are nice and long, so you've got a lot of space to remove your makeup. They are made from a nanofiber. They are super, super soft. You just wet them with water and wipe your makeup off and then you throw them in the washing machine. They last a really long time. I still have some of the baby pink color that I have been using for well over a year and a half, I reckon. But these are a really amazing product and they remove your makeup so easily. They're really gentle on the skin and I love that they're reusable. I've been seeing a lot more brands come out with reusable makeup removing cloths. The Face Halo is probably one of the most popular ones. 
I haven't tried the face halo, but I think I would still prefer these because they are bigger. The face halo is just like a circle, a little bit hard to get in the nooks and crannies. This, mm -mm, you're done. Okay guys, well this is the finished makeup look. I hope you enjoyed watching and hearing my favorites of the year. Make sure you leave me a comment down below letting me know if you agree with any of my favorites and also give me a list of your favorites of the year because I would like to try a few more products. I'm always up for trying new products. All right, well that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and if you wanna watch last year's favorites, I will have that link down below as well as every single product review that I have. So you may have a lot of watching to go do. Don't forget to come follow me over on Instagram. If you aren't already, I will have my name on the screen for you now. Otherwise, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.